This is Lee with 82 Gaming 12. This is going to be the fourth video concerning Prelude to Vicksburg Battle of Chickasha Bayou, December the 26th to the 29th, 1862. This is the other American Civil War series. This is volume nine. So. Designer Stephen Oliver, developer Melvin Dale, uh, Deal, uh, graphics Stephen Oliver, Charlie Keebler, Mark Mahaffrey, and we also have some other credits here. Um, Richard Hanwith and Herman Lutman, uh, designer of the Blind Sword System. So, and uh, there's the uh, website i've been putting dot com i need to change that to dot us so i'll go back through there and make those changes to the uh information uh people are probably going and saying well that ain't that ain't working that's because i'm putting dot com instead of dot us so um <clears throat> okay so i talked in the last video about uh some issues that uh, I was having um, concerning possibly that um, I felt like the artillery might have been too weak, but uh, maybe it's not uh, with the fact that, you know, you've got all of these, uh, not there, uh, the uh, low ammo markers you have to put on uh, seven of the artillery pieces and you can even put two on one to make it minus four which would be pretty drastic um, basically eliminating that really that artillery piece would be uh, non-existent basically because uh, all of these except for maybe uh, let's see one maybe only has a strength of two so I think there's one that had a strength of three and it's already been eliminated. So I just felt like that uh, the uh, artillery was uh, almost uh, not effective. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Um, I know that... Uh, We've got several penetrations that have occurred uh, and a lot of weaknesses now. We've got Blair and De DeCourcy both uh, going through here. And I'm going to read you a little bit from uh, Donald L. Miller's uh, book, Vicksburg. And uh, it'll probably uh, help to um, explain the situation and some of the things, but it doesn't go into a lot of real nitty gritty detail. And that's because it's covering the whole campaign of Vicksburg. So um, that uh, that's part of it, but it does give us uh, a lot of information about, as I already mentioned in the, in the second video, uh, no, I guess the third video of why this spot was chosen. Um, now we're going to look at, uh, <clears throat> now that the spot's chosen, what Sherman did, okay, uh, what his uh, commands were. So let's do that uh, rather quickly. Um, but uh, as you can see, we've got Blair and DeCourcy in here. We've got Thayer here. And over here, we got uh, Burbridge, okay. Uh, these two units are Burbridge, and they're going through the, uh, the cypress trees. And, uh, of course, that tangled up mess there uh, results easily in disruptions, okay, or cohesion hits, put it that way. Okay, so, um, as I said, uh, this is 82 Gaming, and uh, let's take a look at uh, what was going uh, going on as a different thing. So, okay. <clears throat> We're going to start here. It says, Sherman appeared in a flash, made a quick uh, reconnaitre 
on horseback and pointed to the bluffs, barked, this is route to take. And then he wheeled his horse and rode off. And then minutes later, his adjutant arrived and told Morgan, okay, who's uh, the divisional commander of uh, Sheldon, Lindsay, and the Corsi. And so he arrives and tells Morgan, he's there to, to uh, you know, uh, explain Sherman's orders. And it was this, tells Morgan to give the signal for the assault. We will lose 5,000 men before we take Vicksburg. Might as well lose them here. So Morgan uh, later claimed uh, we will lose the men, but from this position, position we will not take Vicksburg. And uh, so there was a dispute there later uh, that where Sherman said this wasn't so. I pointed to the General Morgan, the place where he could he could pass the bayou, and he answered, General, in 10 minutes after you give the signal, I'll be on those heels. Sherman would accuse Morgan of cowardice. He was to lead his division in person. Well, instead, he watched from afar. Now, we don't get all of that. You know, maybe it'd, it'd be good to go back and see if, to find those uh, orders that uh, the adjutant uh, gave. But uh, Sherman is uh, is saying a lot more than what, you know, uh, Miller's writing here. He's just writing. He, he rode up and said, here, this is the route. Go. And then he turned around and left. So apparently Sherman was unhappy with the results. And so he shifted the blame, it looks like, onto the, uh, Gordon to Morgan. Um, Sherman planned a three-brigade assault led by the Corsi and Brigadier John, John uh, General, Brigadier General John Thayer on one side of the Chickasha Bayou. Okay, and so if we look here, this is what we've got uh, here at the Y. Okay, uh, the triangle uh, is, is what it's called here, the triangle. Okay, so you have de Corsi and Thayer, okay, on this side of the bayou. And then Blair was on this side. Okay, here's one of Blair's guys right here. Um, and they were able to cross, and now they've penetrated in here, okay. Um, I think this is another Blair, yeah. So we've got that, okay. <clears throat> And we have a Sergeant Henry Kircher of Bellevue, Illinois, noticed the men's faces got paler and paler. Of course, they're going right into the uh, uh, maelstrom, okay, of bullets and shrapnel and cannon, uh, cannonballs. Okay, now right here, let me go back up here. I have to go up higher. At the top here, it says, after a ferocious cannonade, the three brigades, 6,000 men, moved forward at the sound of the drums. The Corsi's 1,500 volunteers marched two by two across the wooden wooden bridge. That's going to be the um, corduroy bridge here. That, uh, right here. Okay. That bridge right there. So it was only wide enough for uh, the two people, shoulder to shoulder, to go. Okay. Um, so as they're crossing this, Sergeant Kitchener's regiment was left behind to await orders to attack. And so Kitchener is saying, our guardian angel took us under his wing because they didn't go into the fray. And his, his regiment, uh, didn't get, get cut to pieces. So, uh, it says that Frank Blair... Okay, this is Blair's men here. Okay, his brigade. He rode on horseback, but uh, because of the soft mud, he had to get off the horse. Okay. Now it says, upon reaching the rebel side of the bayou, his brigade struggled to climb a slick, 10 foot high embankment. That's going to be the levee. Okay, that's the levee here. Um, and it had. Uh, all these tree limbs and everything else that were, were, were sharpened, and they tore flesh and woolen uniforms. 
the, cow, the, the Corsi meanwhile got his men over the log bridge only to run into an immense and fearful destructive fire. And so his men took cover and he ordered them to move no further. They were basically out of the fight. So once they got it across the bridge, they basically, I guess they must have just laid down along the, um, the levee there and tried to keep from getting killed. So, now it says that Blair's boys with Thayer in close support fought a running battle. Now, I don't know how that Thayer was on this side of the bayou. Blair was on this side. Now, it says Blair with Thayer's men in support. I don't know how Th Thayer was supporting Blair because they're on s separate sides of the bayou. Unless they're talking about once they got across the bayou. It's kind of confusing there. Okay, I'll just show you right here. It says Blair's boys with Thayer in close support. I don't know about that. It says waiting for them in shallow holes below the bluffs were rebel riflemen. Among them, Winch Winchester Halls, 26th Louisiana. And then you had General Lee. This is S.D. Lee, not Robert E. Rest, uh, S.D. Stephen. D, okay. And they were overlooking uh, the battle from the Walnut Hills with citizens of Vicksburg, ladies, so forth. So. And it says, bullets whistling around their ears, the defenders delivered round after punishing round on the Yan uh, advancing Yankees. It says Frank Blair made it through a storm of mini balls into the rifle, rifle, uh, rebel rifle pits. Some of his men followed and held their position momentarily, but seeing they were alone and unsupported, they broke and ran. And Blair somehow survived without a scratch. And then it says another part of the battlefield. Thayer also penetrated the enemy's work, but of his five Iowa regiments, only one was still following him. Ordering a subordinate to hold his position, he dashed back to where De Corsi had stopped uh, and found his men lying in a ditch, too traumatized to move. Thayer employed De Corsi to get his men forward, but he would not expose them. He cried out to useless destruction. Returning to the bluffs, Thayer found the, his single regiment withdrawing under raking fire after taking 30% casualties. So, and then uh, when Thayer returned to his lines, he discovered what had happened to his lost regiments. While he and Blair were advancing on the bluffs, General Frederick Steele, on Morgan's recommendation, had inexplicably ordered one of Thayer's regiments to move to another part of the battlefield. The other regiments, blindly f uh, obeying Thayer's orders to follow the men in front of them, marched off. With the loss of these 3,000 men, along with the Corsi's brigade, the final assault had been made by only five of the 13 regiments Sherman had ordered into the fight. And after the war, Sherman, of, of course, chastised Morgan. I have ever felt that had General Morgan promptly and skillfully sustained the lead of Frank Blair's brigade on that day, we would have broken the rebel line. And he says, Morgan lost me a battle, otherwise won, but not so fast. That's questionable. The rebel position that afternoon was virtually unassailable. Even if the assault force had taken the bluffs, it would have found themselves in a worse trap, as Sherman himself con conceded in a more measured mood. When Sherman ordered the assault, he was still convinced that Grant was taking care of Pemberton. But with Grant no longer threatening, threatening him, Pemberton would have run his whole force against us at Vicksburg. So Pemberton's force uh, was at uh, Granada. So, so basically it says that the battle was a one-day affair. And uh, one Ohio soldier said we had bitten off more than we could chew. So 
that's what we got. So we'll see if the Union forces can get further than further along than the uh, historical results here. So I flipped everybody over. What I haven't done is uh, I have got to add the divisional leaders uh, to the cup, the CNCs. And then I've got to uh, add the uh, Fortunes of War, Fog of War, and then we have to uh, draw for these uh, chits. And really, if I'm the Confederates uh, player, I want to make sure that I get that uh, artillery superiority uh, each and every time because that way I can remove those uh, low ammo markers. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm just... Mixing these up so I can draw four. Uh, probably the uh, there's four. Um, the Union would want to have the huzzah, 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 oh, and uh, maybe rally. And the Confederates, like I said, the superior artillery. Okay, so we're at the 12.30 turn. And uh, you know, the victory conditions all have to do with controlling uh, trench hexes. either the first row or the second row. So we're going with the uh, artillery. So I've got these two here. Can't fire at this one. Fire at Greg here. One. Two. Three. Four. Or four. Either one. He can fire at this one. He's 12. So we're going to fire at this one here. Um, so what we got is we've got 12 uh, parrot and rifled. So one, two, three, four. That's going to be effective. 
Okay, so we're going to have modifiers. Um, this guy's not on this higher level, so he's actually having to shoot over his own men here. Uh, he's not actually shooting over this guy, though. Shooting over this guy. This guy here. Let's pull this out and take a look here. I guess we can limit it. We don't have to actually. We're not actually firing through the through the fallen timbers as if we were doing this. So okay. So we're gonna have. Uh, Greg is, of course, you got the levy and the uh, tranche. So he starts out 12, 13, drops two for the tranche to 8, 9, one for the levy. Okay. And I don't think he's not in. Okay. And then one for firing over somebody, his own unit. So he's at five. 62 and Greg has a four so it's going to be routine 36 morale hit and retreat two all right since he's retreating he gets to be fired on by that confederate I mean, uh, the Corsi. Okay, so that is eight. And uh, I guess he's in the trench. Doesn't get the levy. So he actually goes down to the five. 51. So he was at four, he's a three. That's still routine. Sixty one depleted. So he gets depleted. Still has to retreat two. So he's back to there. Will he actually go this way? There we go. All right. So then we uh, put the fired marker here. All right. So now. Um, I'm going to eventually, I'm going to want to move these guys up to here. Um, uh, but at the present time, That guy doesn't have any. Tell you what. Oops. Tarleton. This guy's at a different level. Tarl Tarleton here is going to fire here at Thayer, the fourth in Ohio. So Tarleton has that minus two. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Still effective. So he starts at two. So he's going to be at actually strength of C. 33 is not enough. Okay. 
okay now we go back to the uh, Union um, this guy here is gonna fire at this one one two three four now he is uh, he is firing uh, I think you, uh, you, you I don't know I have to look so he's mixed one two three okay so mixed is still going to be effective range okay he's uh, got the levy in the trench so trench he's at six goes down two He's firing over a unit, down to three. Defender's behind a levy. He's down to two. Firing through light woods or fallen timber. We're at one. Sixty-one. Oh, he gets him at rough. 35, I mean, not rough, routine. 35, three and five, retreat two. Now, he's got a retreat two, but he's gonna be fired on by the Corsi now, the 16th Ohio. Uh, he's in the trench, we're giving that, so we're firing from, what's he, eight? Five. Okay, 36, 5, you'd have to be a 1 or 2, and he's not. Okay. So, there he goes. Okay, fired marker. All right. Still know I want to move that. Okay, let's start here. Duncan, gonna fire at this guy right here. So that's canister, so he's he doesn't have a minus. Uh, that's going to be two times half, so he's at three, and then he's smoothbore, so he gets the uh, column shift to the right, so now he's at four. Fifty-four. Okay, he's got a two, which it becomes a one. Let's see, he's in the swamp. Swamp. I think swamp, he's still gonna get support. Yeah, he still gets support, so. <coughs> oh, excuse me, routine, 62. He's going to be depleted. So he's flipped over. Okay. It's nice to have these uh, fired markers. All right, then we have, let's see here. Um, for the Union, we've got this unit here. Um, there's two there, that's 12. They're gonna fire right here. They're 
scrap iron through that. Okay, so they start off at 12. 12, 13. Two to the left for the trench. One for the levee. One for firing through the fallen timbers. So we're at five. Fifty-four. Uh, it's going to be routine. Thirteen. Routine. He's just going to have to retreat. So... Thomas had to retreat. The 31st Alabama B. Okay, now Ward. Gonna fire at the 54th. Uh, strength of four. Two times half or canister, and then he gets a shifty smoothbore. So four. 23 is not going to be anything. Yep. No effect there. Got to stack those. That's what you have to do. Okay, these two here, both are all mixed and rifled. these guys Move them out there. Okay. Um, let's see here. This one here can't fire. Only got a strength of one, and he's got this shake in here, so he can't fire. He's too close. If he tries to escape, he's got opportunity fire. So, um, leave him sitting there. Okay, these two guys here we're gonna move. So, okay, um, up a slope. Okay. Ranch is a three. So we go movement of six. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's where they go. And so this is higher than this, so they would be able to look down on these guys. So, 
Move or fire. There we go. Artillery rally st rebuild step. No. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Can't do that yet. We've got uh, Union's got these two guys here. So they want to get these guys in here. Six and then four. Six is actually what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at uh, the artillery stacking. So six is 4.5, a four is going to be a three. So what I'm looking at is okay. Uh, see, I can't can't cross with both of these uh, over this creek here uh, and use the road. So in order to use the road, I've got to stay within under t ten stacking points so that meant which means okay this guy here is an eight okay i can't use the road to get across that river that creek so i'd have to the creek is going to cost plus two otherwise um but this is over already overstacked here. So and I can't go here. I can't go here. I could move one of them there. Um so I could go one, two, three. Uh, let me check that creek as what. Oh yeah, plus two. See, so it's one, two, three, four, five. See, I can't get there. See, I could get them over here so they could fire. That's about all I can do right now. So I'd have to move them individually. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now they've moved. Okay, so that's their artillery phase. And to clean this up, I wanna get, I wanna get those off. I'm used to just turning them. Um, and I, what I do is I put them underneath. Put them underneath anybody. Of course, with this one here, it didn't move. So now we're ready to drill the cut.
the first draw. Is handsome movement. This is like a, this is new. This handsome movement. Okay. So this is where I can select up to two adjacent hexes with uh, Confederate units and may move them one, one hex. They can engage, no close combat. Even artillery can be used. Um, it says the uh, it, the Union units may conduct an opportunity fire. Can't use uh, uh, with units that are uh, reinforcements. You can move into the Bayou Hex without any penalty or roll and so forth. Um, do I have somewhere I want to move? Some units? Yeah. I think for one, I want to do this over here. I want Thomas to go back in. So I'm going to put Thomas back in here. That's, that's, a, that's it. So... Okay, we got Morgan. Now, Morgan only gets a plus one this time to his command uh, rating. I rolled a two, so he still passes. Okay, so Morgan has DeCourcy, Lindsay, and Sheldon. I want to move to Corsi, and uh, I'm going to go on the attack here. So, um, okay, he can't, well, yes, he could actually fire from here to here. Um, both of these guys could fire here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So, uh, Morgan is having to course the attack. So, we're gonna do an attack order. Uh, so, first off, we're gonna do our offensive fire. So, we've got uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna wait. These two guys are gonna fire here. Um, this guy's going to fire separate. Okay, so he's firing to here. Uh, and he's on the in the trench. So, plus it's uh, four, eight, firing at range of two is half. Uh, so it's long range. Um, so he's a four... And it's going to go down because of the trench. So it's a two. Twenty-one. No, 
not effective. Okay. Now these two guys are gonna fire. And they're both halved four and then four point five to eight eight point five. Uh so they got the levy and the trench. So that's three that they go down. So he's gonna be at four. Uh sixteen uh, not not effective. Okay. Um, this guy here has a strength of five, which would be halved two. Um, he's up there, doesn't get the levy, but he gets the trench. So what I see is two, so he'd be at a C. That guy has, what, a three? Tough to get a C. Okay, got a 56 is not enough. Okay, so this guy's on the bridge here. Okay, um, let's see. The levy is a plus one. The trench is just a one. Okay. But the road is going to alleviate the trench. So, yeah, let's move this guy first. I think about opportunity fire here. Because I want to get all three of these guys in there. And possibly this guy. One way to do that. Is to go there. This guy. He could go one, two... Three, four, up a slope. This guy goes one, right there. Let's see, one, two. I don't want to move him. I want to allow Blair to come through here. Uh, hold on. Let me go back here a second. Okay, so this guy goes there. Now, in order for this guy to go to here, okay, he'd have to be in the bayou. And he's not, so he'd have to go to here. This guy could go to here, but if I wanted to continue,
that's the dilemma. Do you push through and take the take the uh, opportunity fire? I think I'd do that with this guy. All right, so we're gonna do so we're gonna move him on. So that's gonna be opportunity fire from the 50th Tennessee here against the 52nd Ohio. So let me look here first. Okay, so he went one, two, right there. He's stopping for that. This guy goes uh, road right there, and then he wants to continue to move. So as he continues to move, he's going to get fired on. Okay, so that's six. And I guess he's considered... Hmm, He's on the road, so he doesn't get the benefit of the print. Six, 65, 46. Okay, and uh, at that moment, he's not supported, so he's at a three, so that's gonna be tough. Oh, wait a minute. Opportunity fire is, is only half of six, so that's three. So, 65, what does that say? It's going to be routine. Uh, 13, no effect. No? There's effect. He has to retreat one. So, his movement's done. So, he goes to right there. And this guy goes uh, 1, 2, and stops right there. I don't want to move him in there. I want to give Blair an opportunity to move up here. Okay, so uh, now we have defensive fire. We're going to start over here. Um, the course he is attacking here and here.
Okay. So these guys have seven. 42. Okay. He's got a cohesion of four. So it's going to be routine. Oh, 62. He's going to be depleted. 